no matter the location. From OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and what are we talking about on today's Monday episode? We're going to be breaking down today's news and rumors, but before we get into all of this, today's show is presented by my good friends, Panda Subs. If you go to pandasubs.com and use code Raider Nation, you're going to be able to save 40% off on the best workout supplements that there are, and I was told by the owner today, if you make your purchase today, you're going to get some free samples. The bigger the purchase, the more free samples you get. So we're going to be breaking down a pretty interesting rumor around Jadeveon Clowney potentially coming to the Raiders because some insider said it's a possibility. Could the Raiders go out and draft Caleb Farley after seeing a new mock draft from PFF? And at the very end of the show, we're going to be breaking down all the first round picks since 2010. Now, if you guys love the silver and black, if you're a diehard Raiders fan, and if you want free Raiders videos every single day, it's simple. All you got to do is hit that big red button that is underneath this video here. It says subscribe on it if you're wondering. I am trying to get to 77,000 subs. If you are already a loyal watcher to the program here, just know that I appreciate you. And if you could, send the link youtube.com slash Raiders support to some new family members, maybe some Raiders Nation family members. At the end of the day, the bigger the show gets, the more videos we can do. All right, Raider Nation, so we're going to be breaking down some rumors today around Jadeveon Clowney. Now, this show is based on the idea of when I see something out there, I'm going to speak on it. So this is a pretty interesting story here around Jadeveon potentially going to Las Vegas. It comes from Michael Silver himself, who is technically an NFL insider, and I'm going to use technically an insider in air quotes there. But the Raiders, they could go out and sign Clowney. This has been a player that I've actually talked about a few times here on the Raiders report because John Green Gruden has had, well, some interest in him in the past. Silver goes out to call Clowney a quintessential Raider and that he'd be the perfect move for Las Vegas. I don't know if I 100% agree with the perfect move for Las Vegas, but I'm at least going to let Silver tell his side of the story in this quote here. Clowney would have been a Raider back in the day, and it just depends how much he's getting offered by other teams. If you're the Raiders, don't you try? I mean, Max Crosby was really your only edge presence. You signed Ngakwe, so now you got a second edge presence and an accomplished one. But get yourself more and put a little fear into opposing offenses when you line up. You look at Jadeveon Clowney when he's healthy, that provokes fear. So basically what he's talking about here is how the Raiders went out. They got Yannick. You have Max Crosby. He did leave out my man Cleveland Furl, who I still think is one of the more underrated defensive line linemen in the league. But does, does Jadeveon add more depth to this team? Yes, he absolutely does. Does it make it better? Yes, he absolutely does. But at the end of the day, you got to talk about dollars and cents when it comes down to Clowney. So I want you to think about it here. Should the Raiders go out and sign defensive end Jadeveon Clowney? I want you to type Y for yes or N for no. As always, if you're going to be an overachiever, if you're sitting here saying, yes, Mitch, they absolutely should, I want you to tell me why. So for everyone out there typing Y for yes or N for no, how likely are the Raiders to actually go out and make this move happen? Dude, I'm giving this one zero chucky heads. I'm going to say tuck rule, tuck that. I get that Silver said it's a possibility, but there's been more reports that have come out recently that said that the Ravens, the Browns, the Colts, those are the teams that are actually keeping tabs on Clowney. It's not really been mentioned that the Raiders have. At least Schefter and Ian Rappaport haven't mentioned them. Clowney was actually supposed to fly to Cleveland over the weekend. I don't know exactly what happened to his flight details, but apparently they screwed it up. So now he's scheduled to fly to Cleveland on Tuesday. The other reason why that this is simply not going to happen, since the Raiders re decided to restructure Colt Miller's contract, which I'm okay with, they put a lot more money on this year's cap. So as it sits right now, according to Spotrack, $3.62 million in cap space. I'm just going to be honest. He ain't going to sign for anything less than that. Plus, you have to remember, the Raiders still have to pay their rookies. So there's going to be some contracts that get switched up here. You could see some even more players that get cut because the 2021 rookies, as it stands right now for the Raiders, they're going to make $8.53 million. So it's a fixed cost, remember. If you still have all eight of those picks, so your first round pick, your second round pick, your two third rounders, your fourth, your fifth, and your sixth, that's going to equal $8.53 million. So that money, plus the money the Raiders have, it's not going to be enough to go out and get clowny. So here's again what Michael Silver had to say on NFL Network. You sign Ngakwe, which blah, 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 blah. What I want you to really focus on here is this. You look at your Devion when he's healthy, that provokes fear. My question to everyone that comes across this video, whether you are a Raiders fan or what, does Jadeveon Clowney actually strike this fear 
that when we hear his name, like we think of, I get it. He was drafted first overall back in 2014. He's got amazing high school tape, and he nearly decapitated a Michigan football player. Like, I think when we think about Clowney, that's the play we think about. Does he have all the tools to be great? Absolutely. 6'5", 255 pounds. They don't make athletes like him. But he's had issues in terms of staying healthy. He's also had issues just wanting to play football. I don't want somebody that just kind of shows up here and there. I want somebody that gives it their all. And I can't, can't sit here and say that I think Clowney's going to be that guy. So in terms of the Raiders going out and signing Jadevi on Clowney, I am going to give it zero chalky heads tuck rule tuck that. If they do go ahead and make the move, I will be surprised. But I am starting to learn from Gruden and from Mayock some of the moves that they're making this offseason, and I just don't see Clowney in the cards. All right, so today's show is presented by my good friends Panda Supps. As a reminder, Code Raider Nation, you're going to be able to save 40% off if you're looking for some of the best tasting protein and 30 grams per scoop. That's wild to me. Only 140 calories as well. The vanilla ice cream, the chocolate ice cream, I'm not going to lie to you. What I literally do is I take some milk, I put that in the scooper, and then I throw it in my freezer, and I'll actually eat it as ice cream as I'm sitting there late at night. Another trick. If you got a craving for cereal, all you got to do, seriously, go try this protein right here. It is like the milk on the bottom of your Fruity Pebbles tricks. I mean, it, it's wild. It's the greatest, greatest taste of protein I've ever had. Plus, no sugar added. So with our deal, usually it's $49.99. You can just cut that down to $29.99. And a special offer for today, April 12th, it ends at midnight. If you purchase any Panda Sup's products, okay, bigger the order, the more free samples you can get. I just talked on, on the phone with the, with the owner here at Panda, and he was like, hey, man, free samples for everyone at Raider Nation today that uses that code. So if you want more protein, if you want some fat burners, if you want help trying to stay more focused at school, work, try the new tropics, all amazing products at pandasups.com, code Raider Nation. If you can't remember the link uh, you see on screen, it's going to be in the description and it's going to be in the comments. Raiders news and rumors coming at you here, and what we're going to be talking about now is the 2021 NFL Draft because, let's face it, man, it's just a few weeks away at this point, and the rumors keep on coming, and they're coming. And the story that we're talking about today is around Caleb Farley because in Pro Football Focus's latest mock draft, they had the Raiders picking Farley. And I absolutely love Farley, the player. And if you could honestly tell me that, okay, we're playing Madden, you can turn injuries off, He's a top 10 player in my opinion. The issue is this. This is not Madden and I can't do that. But according to PFF, Farley would be a great fit in Bradley's system. Totally agree. Why? Because he's a long, lanky cornerback with extremely athletic ability. And then Sam Monson, he's actually the person that wrote this article from PFF, said he's the best cornerback available when healthy. Again, that is something that I agree with. So stick with me here. We got a few quotes that we're going to run through and why PFF decided that Raiders drafting Farley at 17 made a lot of sense. Arguably the best cornerback available when healthy, Caleb Farley has been rapidly slipping down draft boards from a borderline top 10 pick at his peak to somewhere in the bottom of the third round, according to PFF's mock draft simulator. As I say this right now, remember, don't do mock drafts at PFF's mock draft simulator. It's actually not that good. They need to update it. Farley dealt with multiple back issues during his college career, and that will always scare teams. But if he checks out medically, and reportedly did medical rechecks in Indianapolis, and actually I have an update today, apparently he is going to be okay to go, but that's just what he has to say we still need to see. The Raiders are the kind of team that would fall in love with his physical tools. I had never seen a corner with the kind of recovery speed and burst that football teams uh, to the football that Farley has. Those are traits that the Raiders above most teams would find it difficult to pass up. So if you've watched the Raiders report before, you know that I had Farley as my number one cornerback. It's a little bit different now, but a lot of the things that PFF said, they are 100% right. 6'2", 207 pounds. He is a big dude. With his type of speed, it's really hard to be able to find players, not just cornerbacks, that have as much athletic ability as he has, but then also at the cornerback position, which is a need. I get that he opted out in 2020, but in 2019... I mean, the 20 tackles, 12 pass breakups, four INTs, he probably could have came out in the 2020 draft and been a first-round pick. Like, that's how good he is. Do the back issues scare me? Absolutely. Now, if you guys don't care what PFF says, because if I'm being 100% legit, I don't really think that their draft analysts are all that good. So I'm going to shout out my man Marcus Mosher from Bleacher Report here. And he said, if healthy, 
Farley would immediately be the team's best corner as he has a rare blend of size, speed, and the ability to take away the football. If the Raiders want to gamble on an incredible talent, Farley wouldn't be the worst pick. So before I give you my answer on this, should the Raiders go draft Farley at pick number 17? I want you to type D for draft or type P for pass. I've done some other content here where I've talked about Farley being a potential player to draft at 17. I still don't know if I'm 100% there yet, but go down in the comments. Let me know. D for draft or P for pass. In terms of the Raiders drafting Farley at 17, I am going to give this one only one Chucky head. I'm going to say it's a small shred of truth here. Like, I get it that people out there are saying, don't be surprised if the Raiders take Farley at 17. And I agree. If he's healthy, he would be the best cornerback on the team. No disrespect to uh, Mullen. But I do think Farley would be better and has a better upside. Here's the thing, though. I'm actually starting to believe that Farley might fall to pick number 48. I think it's more likely that he could fall to pick 48 than getting taken at 17. So I asked my man Tom Downey. Tom, updated list of your top cornerback prospects. He has Patrick Sertan at 1, J.C. Horn at 2, Greg Newsom 3, Caleb Farley 4, Asante Samuel Jr. at 5. We've seen players in the past fall down. Like, remember Christian Fulton, a cornerback that was literally up there, could be taken in the first round, falls all the way to pick 60. I know it's a different position. DK Metcalf, he fell, I believe, all the way down to like pick 69. If certain teams see a certain medical check and it doesn't work out, it's really going to scare them. But what Marcus says is this, it wouldn't be the worst risk at pick 17. I just simply do not trust John Gruden taking risks anymore in the first round. Like, if all the risks that we've done in the past would work out, I'd be okay with it. But I'm sick and tired of taking these risks or taking a player that I think is going to develop at pick 17. If Caleb Farley is 100% healthy, it's not a risk. It's an absolute home run type of a pick. But if we don't need to do it, if we don't need to take a risk at 17, why are we doing it? So I, I understand, like, it'd be an okay risk to take. But has Gruden really been able to prove to us that the picks in the first round, well, at least all the picks that he's taken in the first round, have really worked out? I'm going to say no to that. So how about this, okay? If I'm saying kind of no to pick 17, what about pick 48? Let's just say in a crazy world, Farley falls down. And like I've said before, we've seen players slide in the drafts. And if I were to be honest with you, I could actually see Farley falling all the way down to pick 48. So what I want you to do is type L for love it if you, the Raiders would take him. Or if you think the Raiders would ultimately regret taking Farley at 48, I want you to type R for regret. I think you'll have no regrets whatsoever following me on Instagram, at MitchellRens365. I wish I had the tattoo to be able to show you all. But we're always breaking down more things on IG. I just hit 20,000 followers over there, so I appreciate everyone that's already given me a follow. If you want to hit me up with an extra question or something that you see from an episode, please go ahead and do so. If you have an episode idea, the DMs are open for a reason. So slide on in them, at MitchellRens365. All right, the last story that we're going to talk about here on the Raiders Report is actually, again, from Pro Football Focus, breaking down which teams that were the best and the worst at making draft picks since 2010. And the Las Vegas Raiders came in at pick number, well, ranked 32. And in terms of are they the worst team since 2010, I'm going to give this one to Chucky Heads. People are talking. I agree with it, and I disagree with it. So basically what they did was they graded based on war. For those of you that don't know what war means, it's wins above replacement, and all of their algorithms and all of their numbers go back to what PFF ranks. As I've stated before, I do not really think that PFF is all that good at analyzing overall players, especially when it comes to the draft. But war represents the number of wins a player is worth over a replacement level NFL player. The reason why I'm giving it two Chucky heads is because I agreed with some of the takes that they had in the article. I also really disagreed with it. Like, there were some teams in there that gave up so much draft capital for a quarterback that didn't work out. The Raiders, they haven't done something like that. So that's why I'm giving it only two Chucky heads. Now, this is what PFF had to say on the Raiders' pick since 2010. Sheesh. It's been a bad decade to be a fan of the Raiders as their only two first-round picks that they have truly turned out to be anything special were traded away for a host of selections that are certainly closer to bust than stud. There's a time for the youngins to get their act together, but it'll take a borderline miracle for them to improve enough to boost the Raiders on the list. The organization's newfound fascination with depleting the offensive line could continue to leave this team in rough shape moving forward. So the top two picks that the Raiders had, according to Pro Football Focus since 2010, was Khalil Mack and Amari Cooper. 
Now, do I agree with Khalil Mack being on this list? Yes, I absolutely do. I know that the Raiders, when they traded him away, people were like, oh, what the heck is going on? He gets that nice contract. Six years was what, like $141 million with the Bears. It's kind of funny. MIT actually awarded the Raiders the best move of like the year, and it turns out now where I'm kind of in agreement with a lot of people that I don't really know if the Khalil Mack trade was actually worth it because we still need edge rushers, and since he's gone, it has not been all that pretty, especially for this defense. In terms of Amari Cooper, on the other hand, though, I'm actually going to disagree with this. Was Amari his first two years with the Raiders excellent? Yes, absolutely. Over 1,000 yards, 72 catches, and I believe like 81 catches his first two years. But what PFF is failing to notice is how bad Amari was his final year in terms of he led the NFL in terms of drop rate. He led the NFL in terms of, I believe, target to drop rate as well. But if you actually watched Amari play, he didn't want to be on the Raiders. He didn't want anything to do with this Las Vegas team. And it showed he was not running his routes cleanly. Is he having a good career right now in Dallas? Yes, because he wanted to be there. But for whatever reason, the concentration wasn't there, and he was not a very good player that final year in Las Vegas. So before I ask you all who's the worst pick that the Raiders have had in the first round since 2010, I'm going to roll through here, and I'm going to show you all of the picks, all right? But first, actually, I, gotta, I forgot. i got to show you PFFs. So here are the worst first-round picks since 2010. It's Damon Arnett, Jonathan Abram, Colt Miller, Henry Ruggs, Killer Furl. This is how they ranked them. So they ranked it clear, or Damon has been the worst pick since 2010. Then Abram, then Miller, then Ruggs, then Furl. That's pretty interesting considering the fact that all three, all five of those guys has been since 2018. So before I let you know who I think has been the worst pick, and before we go through and I ask you who's been the worst pick, let's go through all the picks here since 2010. And you got Rolando McLean, linebacker, taken eighth overall. That's what you see in the parentheses. No first-round pick in 2011 or 2012. DJ Hayden, cornerback, 12th overall. Khalil Mack, Amari Cooper then at 2015. Carl Joseph, who's actually now back on the team. Garyon Conley at pick 24. Colton Miller, 15th overall in 2018. And then over the last two years, Klee, Jacobs, Abram, Ruggs, and Damon Arnett. So now after seeing all the first round picks since 2010, it is kind of frustrating. Do a lot of these players have upside? Yes, but until I see it, it still is going to be a hard pill to swallow that we took some of these dudes. But be honest with me, okay? What has been the Raiders' worst first round pick since 2010? I just showed you the entire list there from top to bottom. What has been the Raiders' worst first round pick since 2010? At this point, it's Damon Arnett for me. That's where I'm going to stand here. And I understand it's only been one year. Can he prove me wrong? Sure. The issue is this. He was a third-round grade, in my personal opinion. From what I've seen from his first year, was not good whatsoever. And then what actually alarms me more is the off-the-field stuff. Him cursing out Raiders fans on social media. Him posting pretty ridiculous things on social media. Him not 100%, I think, committing to his craft. And also... He seems kind of like a baby uh, from the outside looking in. Is he working hard from people that I talk to that know Damon? Okay, maybe that's the case. But as I see it right now from a talent standpoint, just from a talent standpoint alone, I don't think he's ever going to live up to pick number 19. And then when I see the off-the-field stuff on top of that, that makes me even more worried. That's why as of 2010, he's going to be the biggest first-round bust. Now, if you made it this far in the video and you want to check out more videos from Chat Sports, our link is below, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. Please feel free to check out all of our videos there. And, in fact, I make a lot more videos than just the Raiders report. So if you want more NFL content from me, go subscribe to Chat Sports, youtube.com slash chatsportstv.